Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to Great Photography and Video on a Budget with George E. Harrison. And I want to thank you as always for coming along on this photographic journey with me. You know it's Friday, and you know what I call Friday? It's Video Tease Friday, where I tease you on Friday when I'm going to show you on Tuesday, or talk about on Tuesday. What I'm going to be talking about on Tuesday is how many megapixels do I need to take a good picture. Well, at least I think the good pictures. You might not, but how many megapixels do I need? And today, what we're gonna be talking about is just a six megapixel point and shoot cam. Yes, a six megapixel point and shoot cam. So, oh, but I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, if you're gonna tell us part two Tuesday, when do we hear part one? But well, guess what? That's why I tease, I was video tease Friday. You're gonna hear about part one, like right now. And the first picture we're gonna start out with, this mysterious, Mysterious plant. What goes on here? Do you hear? It looks like a crime scene, doesn't it? When you when you see one of those little horror movies from the 70s and 80s, and you sitting you sitting home eating your popcorn, or if you're my age, you was in the theater, you say, "Don't go in there." But of course, they would go in there. Actually, this is a plant in Ashbury. But as you see right here, see the smokestack? Yes. If you zoom in, 300%. If you're Pixel people, as some people are, you will say, ah, oh, that smokestack is not razor sharp. That's true, but guess what? Not unless you have bi bionic eyes, you're not gonna be zooming in 300%. You're either gonna say, that's a good picture, that's a bad picture, or what? You're not gonna say, oh, let me zoom in and see how that smokestack look. But again, six megapixel, point and shoot camera. We got another one here. Actually, we're gonna go to a daytime shot. We're gonna alternate day and night, day and night. Here's another little shot here of the Grand Canyon. Took uh, actually about 10 years ago. And yes, if you zoom in like right here to some of them rocks all the way, they won't be super sharp. As we used to say, sharp in, in the South, we used to say, sharp as a pimp scrape razor. No, they're not. But if you're just looking at it on the wall like a normal person, it's good enough. You either say, that's either a good shot of the Grand Canyon, or that's a crap shot. You're not going to be worrying about zooming in with your eyes trying to find something. And a little backstory to this, we went during the monsoon season. See that little cloud right? I don't know if you can see it or not. That little cloud right there. We went on purpose during the monsoon season. So we get, so me and my wife, some, and actually we went on purpose, we went to visit uh, Susan Tom, a good friend, friend of ours, and our son Chad. But we also went during the monsoon season. So we get all those beautiful clouds, you know, with the Grand Canyon, all those great pictures you see. You know, we spent a whole week out there during the hard monsoon season. And that's what we got, one cloud. One little cloud, but hey, can't fool Mother Nature. She does what she want to do. But again, this is a six megapixel point and shoot camera. Now I got your daytime shot here. Again, six, I'll make sure I get up right side up. Oh, there's, oh, yeah. Six megapixel point and shoot camera. And if you zoom in, I'll, you see that right? I don't know if you can see it right there. But that is a street sign. That's a light post, a street post, and that's a stop sign. Actually, correction, a street sign. Yes, if you zoom in super, super, super tight, right in there, yeah, maybe it's not that sharp, but your eyes are not going to be zooming in, and hopefully you'll be looking at the picture, oh, man, that's cool. Look at that reflection. I wonder, who, I wonder about the people who live in there. Because think it, if you got all that inside the raindrop, must be some mighty small people in that town. But actually, this was shot in Mount Airy, North Carolina, right after a thunderstorm. Handheld, available light after a th thunderstorm. And I got one more picture to show you here. Again, all this is six megapixels, a camera point and shoot. Well, it was actually, a Fuji S7000, which technically was a six megapixel and was point, technically a point and shoot. Some say point and shoot. I'm going to show you a picture of one of the greatest cities on the planet. And you know what city I'm talking about. Look at that. That's downtown Asheville, North Carolina. And you know, as soon as I said the greatest city on the planet, you know you want to be here. You might as well get in your car right now. Come on down. Now, if you zoom in all the way, I'm going to find that little sign. See, right there. Now, right here, you can read that with your eye. It says, Faust Photo. Yes, I will agree. If you zoom in 300%, the F is going to not going to be that sharp as maybe some other camera. But you're not zooming in with your eye. I mean, okay, if you got bionic eyes and you can zoom on a picture, more power to you. But the rest of us is going to look at the picture. They're going to say that's a cool time exposure. Uh, 15 seconds, so I can get the look. Streaks of the cars and everything. Then it's one shot. That's not a, it, it's, it's just one shot. You know, there's not multiple layers, just one shot. You'll say that's either a good picture 
that's a crap picture or something like that. You're not going to say, oh, I wonder how many megapixels he used. And yes, oh, let me use one other example. Right here where it says at the banking center. Yes, you can read it fine from right here. Clean and sharp. Yes, if you zoom in 600% or 300%, it's not, those letters are not razor sharp. But again, your eyes are not going to be zooming in. And this is what, and this is a six megapixel point and shoot. Uh, actually, camera runs in age. Actually, all these are shot with like basically five, ten year old cameras. So you can imagine how technology has advanced since then and what you can do with a six or five, ten or fifteen, twenty megapixel camera now. And actually, it's a very, very, very small sensor, one slash two point three sensor. Now, I'm not saying not get, yes. If, if you got professional clients, yes, you want that extremely, extremely detailed. So go for a 20 megapixel camera, 30 or 40. I mean, the, one I'm, the two I'm presently using now are 16 megapixels. I'm just using this as an example of what you can get with a small megapixel camera. Matter of fact, a lot of my younger friends, they don't, they don't do prints anymore. It's either social media or on their phone. So basically, yes, you got a 20 megapixel camera, well, just like a lot of stuff I put on my website. Yes, I have a 16 megapixel camera, but a lot of it's a waste. It's kind of like having a Ferrari and never driving over 55. Yes, it does look cool. Don't get me wrong. So if there's anyone out there want to give me a Ferrari, I'll take it. But you can't use it to its full ability. So that's why I said don't get caught up in the megapixel race. You know, worry about the picture itself. Look at the picture, frame it, say, okay, that's what I want, and take it. And one other little tidbit, don't let people shame you about their equipment. You know, they got X number cameras, X, X number megapixels, and they, they, they might be ragging on you. I mean, you still got that old camera, you know, only eight, you don't got that 10 or 12 megapixels. Don't worry about it. If you're taking good pictures with it, you like the camera, and you use it fine. I'm going to use this as an, as an example. Okay, you, got, you have a friend, you driving a Yugo, look at you, you still driving a Yugo, and a friend of yours has a new Corvette. He's making fun of y'all. Man, you got old ragged you go. What's wrong with you? Well, guess what? If that you go gets you everywhere you want to go and you're happy with it, don't worry about the friend in his car bed. Because what works for you is that you go. What works for him is the car bed. So same thing with photography. Don't worry about the equipment someone else has. Worry about the equipment that you have. Pick it up. Go out, go outside, or just walk around your house, or heck, photograph in your house. As long as you're using it, you're having fun with it, then that's the greatest camera in the world. Now, I'm not saying, like I said before, if your clients demand you have a, a really good, high-quality camera, then of course, you go, if you don't have it, you go out and invest in it. Why? Because they're going to pay you for it. But if you're just taking pictures for yourself, and you got an old camera, but as long as you're your old camera, and you get good results, go for it. That's why I said... Don't get caught up in the megapixel array. These are fine, 12 by 18s. I got a couple of 20 by 16 by 20s on the wall. I will show you Tuesday about what you can do back then with a six megapixel point and shoot camera. And again, I want to thank you for coming along with me on this photographic journey. I'm George E. Harrison. If you're watching me on Facebook, go to my YouTube channel, George E. Harrison. And the reason I keep saying George E. Harrison, if you just type in George Harrison, some real guy keeps popping up all over the place. I don't know what it is about this guy, but he's trying to steal my thunder because I'm the original George Harrison. He was just a copy. But, you know, that real guy pops up. So make sure you put that E in there in case you're wondering what the E for. If I had a big ego, I'd tell you it's for excellence, but it's really for Edward, George E. Harrison. And just hit the subscribe button. You know, and if you're on YouTube, same thing. Go down in the right-hand corner, hit the subscribe button. And the subscribe button is a nighttime shot of the famous mural in downtown Ashbury. And month, Tuesday, I'm actually going to show you a shot of that downtown mural that was a 12-second time exposure, again taken with a 6-megapixel point-and-shoot camera. Today, again, I want to thank you for coming along with me on this photographic journey, and I'll see you Tuesday.